It's the German Coupe that has roots in a famous motorcycle race. With a futuristic look ahead of its time, it made its Beetle brother look bloated and out of place on the showroom floor. It got a drop top, it got all wheel drive, and it got rally sport engineering that gave it a little more Ferdischterka. <laughs> This is everything you need to know to get up to speed on the Audi TT. Zip. Zip. Zop. Zip. Zop. Come on guys, we need more energy. This is our dream job. We can't phone it in. Zip, zip, zap, 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 Now you might be asking yourself, how's a famous motorcycle race come into play here? The Audi TT's name is rooted in the Isle of Man TT. In the mid 90s, Volkswagen Group Design Center employees Jay Mays and Freeman Thomas were cooking something up at their office in Simi Valley, California. They summoned the spirit of some fun German coupes from the 50s and 60s before Audi was even Audi. What they were vibing on was the NSU Prinz TT. NSU started making a small rear engine economy car called the Prince. In the early 60s, they came out with the Prince TT to celebrate winning a bunch of Isle of Man TTs with their motorcycles in the 50s. They even made a souped up version called the TTS, which was a hot boy like the Fiat Abarth and Morris Mini Cooper S. The TTS only had 60 horse boys, but it still proved to be competitive in racing and hill climbs. Before it went out of production in the late 60s, it lost the Prince nameplate and was called the 1000 TT. <laughs> they also made a competition centric model from the factory with brace yourselves. You ready? Okay, everybody, I believe a brace. 80 Herspers. <sighs> but that's not even a hundred. That's called a misdirect. Fast forward back to the 90s. Jay Mays and Freeman Thomas stuck a TT nameplate on their unique design and Audi freaking loved it. They got a concept car with a sporty, clean, driver-centric interior ready to roll. The Audi TT concept debuted at the 95 International Motor Show in Frankfurt, Germany. It received all the positive press. It was introduced as an everyday sports car with forward thinking design combined with Bauhaus inspiration, focusing on simplicity, Audi said. The interior rests on the principle of as much as necessary and as little as possible. They kept the possibility of production very hush hush. But in 1998, a mere three years later, which is actually really fast, production models began strutting off the assembly line in Europe. And it didn't just look like a fun little car, it actually was a fun little car. <laughs> Audi did the TT name proud by basing the first gen TT on the VW A4 platform, shared by the Golf, the Jetta, the Beetle freaking everything else. You ever driven a Mark IV Golf GTI? It's a fun little car. 1.8T, never lose. The first TT came with the old faithful VW 20 valve 1.8T four cylinder with either front wheel drive or quattro all wheel drive. I use air quotes because it wasn't a true quattro all wheel drive system, but essentially front wheel drive that would request the rear wheels assistance when traction was lacking, commonly known as Haldex. The TT came as either a coupe or a roadster. The 1.8T made a respectable 180 hertz and was easily tuned. And it was strapped to a five speed manual transmission or a six speed auto transmission. Initially, they planned to only offer it as a manual, but somewhere along the way, they probably thought, hey, we wanna sell these things. 
and stepmoms are gonna buy them, so we should make some automatics. The TT was considered a stylish, suave sports car that was a cut above a GTI, on par with an SLK, but not quite up there with the Porsche Boxster. It was well received by discerning middle to upper class buyers who wanted to have fun, be able to daily it, and look cute to boot. The original TT's design was so revered that it even inspired the design for Kobe Bryant's first shoe by Adidas. Love it or hate it, Unfortunately, there was a bit of a problem with the original car's futuristic award-winning design. The aerodynamics sucked. <laughs> they tended to fly off the road during aggressive high-speed lane changes, but only in Europe. It probably had something to do with a particular German road that has infamous stretches without speed limits. Root sex on sexig. What, that's wrong? What's it called? The auto what? Nah. <laughs> nice try, <laughs> It was tarnishing the TT's great new reputation, so Audi recalled the cars to tack on a little bit of spoiler on the back and make some suspension tweaks to keep the back end more planted. Not too long after the TT was on American roads in 2000, Audi came out with a 225 horsepower version of the 1.8T that only came with Quattro and a six-speed manual. <laughs> Horsepower was boosted by way of a bigger turbo and revised intake and exhaust zero to 60 times. A very cool 6.7 seconds. Later in its production, a 3.2 liter VR6 was optional. In 2004, nine years after Post Malone was born, the VR6 TT was the first to come to American shores with their acclaimed DSG direct shift gearbox. The quick shifting dual clutch automatic transmission had a slick manual mode and helped the TT lunge to 60 miles per in only 6.4 seconds. This narrow angle lump of ingenuity pumped out 247 horsepowers and made sweet, sweet, Beautiful music. It's the same engine that came in the R32 Golf, which we cover in this episode of Up to Spin. One of the best parts of the first gen TT was the optional baseball glove interior. It was by far one of the most unique interiors ever put in a production car. The premium leather and seat bolstering cup your business in real nice while complimenting the rest of the car's design language quite well. And it's got freaking baseball stitches on it. You think you're a jock and you're Tacoma? Oh yeah, does it have freaking baseball stitches? No. Did your car even inspire a single pair of basketball sneakers? What's that? Uh, no, no. In 2006, it was time to spruce things up, Ted. <laughs> The first gen had been around for eight years, which is kind of a long time for car generations. The Mark V Golf had debutted in Europe in late 2003, and since the Golf and TT are littermates attached to the same Volkswagen Auto Group Mama Cat, it was time that this little kitten received platform upgrades similar to the Golf. I mean, it's only fair. The second gen TT was produced from 2006 until 2014. It was a tad wider, a tad longer, and its base engine was now the 2.0 TFSI turbo four cylinder featuring direct fuel injection and a nice bump in performance. Another awesome upgrade was fully independent multi-link rear suspension, which improved handling. This was a big deal when this happened in the Golf. It also had optional magnetic ride dampers. This made the TT a nice cozy daily cruiser, but with one twist of the knob, it could stiffen up a bit for a spirited drive in the canyons. The only other well-known performance car with this tech at the time was the Ferrari 599 GTB. It was also made with aluminum. <clears throat> aluminum. 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 Just give him time. He's at He's had a tough week. Aluminium. Aluminium. It was also made with aluminum body panels to achieve better weight distribution. He's got it. Thank you. Base power with the new two liter turbo engine was up to 200 hertz per 20 more than the previous gen. And again, the 3.2 VR6 <laughs> was optional. You get it with a six speed or the new DSG auto transmission. That means paddle boys. Ooh, look out for them rapids. Uh-oh, waterfall. Mmm, paddle boys, paddle boy. Plink. 
which Audi now called S-Tronic because they're the same as VW, but they don't wanna be the same. With the new generation TT, customers could get into a two liter turbo diesel that made 165 horsepower and a respectable amount of low end Turks. 260 of them Turks. But that was for Europe. Only. On the other end of the spectrum, Audi did enthusiasts a real solid by releasing an angry badass TT with a 2.5 liter, five cylinder turbo. That's right. Ladies and gents, the TT RS. Mm. It almost didn't come to America because, you know, fuck us, right? American enthusiasts actually sent a petition with over 10,000 signatures to one of Audi's execs in Ingolstadt, and apparently that worked. The TTRS arrived in our ports in late 2011, almost two years after it was unveiled at the Geneva Auto Show. The 2.5 liter turbo five cylinder cranked out 355 just beautiful silky ass horses. It was good for 60 miles per in 4.1 seconds. It not only accelerated quickly, but also had a higher top speed of 174 miles per. I've driven a TT and I would never go that fast in one. It only came with Quattro and the drivetrain components were beefed up to handle the big boost in power, which was around 155 more horses than the base trim. Magnaride was also standard as well as big ass brakes and big ass rotors. Like any factory performance machine from Europe, it got a pair of car of seats. But what about TTs that went beyond public roads? I'm talking about real ass race cars. <laughs> Like the original Prince TT, the Audi TT was an excellent race car too. The first and second gen saw and continue to see tons of action in all kinds of racing. I'm talking hill climb, German VLN endurance racing, British touring car championship, the German touring car championship, as well as tons of American club racing. In 2013, American Audi tuner O34 Motorsports, sup dudes, teamed up with German team Rotec Racing to enter a converted front wheel drive TTRS into NASA's, the race guys, not the space guys, 24 hours of Thunder Hill. And guess what? They freaking won the whole thing. The first ever front wheel drive car to do so. Pretty sweet. 2014 was the beginning of the current third gen, AKA, the Mark III. This time it was based on VW's new MQB platform, shared by all the Golfs, Jettas, the small Audis, the little SUVs, everything. The new TT kinda looks like a baby R8 in the front, kinda. And those tail lights, they kinda look like an R8 too. And wouldn't you know it, we got ourselves another TT RS2, this time with a very impressive round 400 horsepowers. Again, powered by a five cylinder, Turbo motor. This car does its Group B forefathers proud. With a zero to 60 time of around 3.6 seconds. It's been called an R8 hunter on the track by the auto journos who don't like me, but I like them. And race car drivers like it. And what about aftermarket tuners getting their hands on them? 450 to the wheels, easy. And some people are reporting 600 horsepower as quite doable. <laughs> This current gen though is the last of the Audi TT. Audi's got their eye on doing a bunch of crazy stuff with electric cars and unfortunately, the low volume niche TT, it's gotta go. I know, it's kinda sad. Maybe they'll come out with a TT electric? They had an autonomous TTS a few years back that did some goofy stuff at Pikes Peak. Maybe they'll combine it all and come out with a slick coupe that got all the latest tech. And maybe, just maybe, Adidas will call me and say, hey James, we'd like you to have a shoe. Would you like it to be modeled after an Audi TT? And I'd say, no, thank you. P no, thanks. Make it after a Golf. Pumphrey, 502. The shirt smells like Little Caesars. Like I feel like Nicky Jakey wore it. <laughs> yeah. Aluminium. 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 I love you.